okay you spoken many times about the structure of the illuminati rothschilds rockefeller bilderberg group club of rome etc but really who's on top who's running the world i mean yeah i see i have not really gone into this in detail because it's something i wanted to come to after really covering the year and now the fine spice and stuff but my metaphysical views are i mean are highly you can say uh, controversial to say the least okay mm-hmm. especially if someone is approaching this for a normie definitely but even in our community a lot of people don't really get these depths that they are and i would just say this right like don't dismiss something uh, that sounds uh, you can say whack like i wouldn't dismiss the flat earth theory just because it sounded whack to me no idea ever sounds whack to me okay like mm-hmm. whether that's flat earth or why i i always consider things that is this could be true no idea is true back to to be true okay like our world is that messed up and reality works in a totally different way compared to how people typically perceive it that lot of people what they think is not possible is actually quite possible once you really understand how how the world works and how the building blocks of of nature work right so i'm not saying this people might think that okay johan believes in uh, like uh, non human entities and stuff so on what basis is he dismissing like flat earth and all this stuff you know cuz that's equally whack as this yeah. but i have i have genuinely considered uh, flat earth as a possibility i spent a lot of time researching that and then came to my opinion that is not true i heard a lot of debates on the subject and then convinced myself similarly for the whole uh, terrain thing like i spent a lot of time researching all the beloved darlings of the terrain theory kind of uh, ideology like uh, andrew kaufman and thomas cowen and you know like all these people like stephen lanka and all that and after researching them and like seeing the counter arguments like i was convinced okay this is not true and i, I trust me i have done the same thing for my non human research for my uh, like the the same rigor with which i i put things out and i have strong opinions like i have subjected the same to my beliefs on spirituality to my non human views so i mean the counter part of that would be listening to people who are you can say on on the end of pushing these theories and then listening to skeptics as well right because that that's how you tend to balance that so i've spent a lot of time researching atheism scientific materialism uh, pure skepticism materialism as well as i've spent a lot of time researching the i mean the, the evidence that exists to show that we are really living in a non material world that reality is actually holographic we are living in some kind of computer simulation uh, you know it's like a sophisticated computer game you can say where you have this cosmic wifi which is like the electromagnetic level of reality and uh, our bodies are the computers like similar to how this laptop works right now right like there's wifi all over this room but i can't really see it through my senses is because i have a decoding device that can take the information and this the the information contained in these waveform fields of the wifi and actually convert it into pratham on the screen out here like you are here in the wifi in this room it's just that i can't see you in this form i need a decoding device to actually get you on the screen out here and see you that way right so that this is how like from my my understanding of the nature of reality this is how reality works and its technology technology is mimicking that because our reality is like that it's like technology is catching up with reality which is why virtual reality and stuff is getting very very similar to like you know you can't even differentiate what's virtual reality and what's normal reality anymore and what is virtual reality te- tech doing it's really feeding information signals into our brain that's like convincing us that okay there's this real world but actually it's just like information signals right and that's exactly what i'm suggesting about reality as well and this is not just a theory there's a lot of uh, you know uh, scientists who who really ex- expunged on the holographic universe theory and really going into uh, you know i mean quantum physics back this up in a deep way as well if you if you really go into it so that's that's my perspective on these things and i kind of have researched a lot of information you can say credible information from a very scientific perspective as well when it comes to evidence of non human phenomena and the afterlife like near near the experience research where they have conducted clinical trials in hospital settings on people who've had these out of body experiences where they really report like okay what what they see outside when they exit the body and you know what kind of experience that is and this is just a summary i would like to give give people on that is that when our body is really a you can say a vehicle for our consciousness to experience this particular reality and uh, once this ends okay it's not the consciousness that ends okay it's just the physical body computer that that degrades but once your consciousness exits you have act, like you can experience reality in a totally different way like if you read people's experiences the entire linearity of time collapses places like you know being able to comprehend multiple things simultaneously it's, ca- it's kind of like everything's going on in the same moment you know we don't have this linear kind of progression that we would have with respect to say a dvd like you know you can just think about dvd the entire thing from start to finish exists in that one moment but it's mm-hmm. just placed like that so if you put it on a in a computer or a dvd kind of decoding device and see it 
you get the illusion that is going from like one place and it's progressing through time but everything just exists on that one cd at that point and it's kind of similar with the time and the universe as well so there's a lot of credible research that's available i mean i can recommend resources like uh, skeptico as well as i've curated a lot of books on this subject of frontier science with respect to psychic research with respect to uh, consciousness itself and all these different kinds of areas and there's a lot of material to pursue on that and a lot of credible people to pursue of course there's quacks and people like that in in anything that you will pursue right but the the job of genuine truth seekers is to figure out like uh, fact from fiction to really and there's no shortcut to that as i said like no one can just give you the truth on a silver platter of like after being born you really have to go and own your perceptions that way so with with that i would say that with that context uh, like through my research i feel that like at the at the like highest levels of this power pyramid it's actually non human forces in a different dimension that are really running this game and this is one of the reasons why you can see the the kind of extent of satanism and pedophilia among the highest levels of the power pyramid uh, this is i mean you can just keep the non human thing aside for a while but if you just look at the the bloodline families and you see the evidence from survivors from people who've been part of these families uh, you know from many different sources like kids who attended satanic rituals and describe what they've seen over there that way and ancient world and how this phenomena used to go out in the past and the evidence has come out about political pedophile scandals and epstein and all this mm-hmm. stuff you know if you really investigate there's very credible information like uh, i would recommend sean stone's documentary best kept secret it's a five part thing where he really goes into great detail about all the satan satanic and pedophile scandals that have happened out in the open there is many cases abroad as well as out here in australia and belgium where these scandals have leaked and like very high profile people have been involved in that right so why are, why are they after children why are they after yeah. sacrifices people have to think about these things okay these are uncomfortable things when i really got into this research and i came across this evidence i think i spent a good one month being depressed like this lying yeah, you know, in bed uh, all day because it's really uh, difficult to go through that pain about like what a child or someone could have experienced on the receiving end and the more you get convinced of it the more scary it is because it could be your child it could be anyone else who's in the world it's this thing is yeah. going on right now you know it's a serious issue like people children are dying and being sacrificed on certain days in the calendar which are very sacred to the elite where they conduct these mass ritual sacrifices and stuff so yeah what, what was the question man i think so, what, yeah sorry uh, from this i want to ask like what do they get from killing and fucking kill children yeah so that's that's what i was getting to so uh, actually the the people who are conducting these rituals they are they are possessed either they have like uh, entity attachment or they have uh, some kind of consciousness that's taken over them and this is a very real phenomena this is why when people tend to go into low vibrational states of consciousness like people tend to have addictions when it comes to drinking or they get, tend to get addicted to drugs like uh, you know bad drugs and stuff of course there's a whole difference between drugs and psychedelic compounds as well and like how we can use them and why the setting matters so i'm not dismissing all drugs as this one drug thing because that's another reason like why people think i'm controlled opposite because i have like a pro psychedelic position you know and like i'm against hard drugs but that again that's also on my principles that i don't think these things should be banned because i believe in individual liberty and i believe that people have the right to do whatever the hell they want to them as long as they're not harming anyone else and that includes bad things right that includes harming the body that includes mentally torturing yourself that includes whatever the hell you want to do because it's your experience like this is a free will experiment you know you are created by the universal consciousness that split into you to be able to have your experience and to learn your mistakes and grow through uh, lifetimes as as your soul evolves that way so that that's the same thing sorry i lost my train of thought man like okay yeah, yeah you were talking about like why yeah. why they're doing this right mm-hmm. so if you actually you know see how these people work most of these people are possessed mm-hmm. and they are being driven by these entities to really conduct these sacrifices so that they can summon these entities in the ritual and exactly when that terror period is going on before they come in the sacrifice there's an entity that attached to them that's that's really feeding on the energy which is why they even into anal sex so much with children is and they bond the children because when the hormonal shift happens okay when pe- children hit puberty there's a energetic shift that happens as well which makes a child you can say uh, more impure spirit from a spiritual perspective like the light that's there in the auric field kind of tends to get suppressed and you know that whole ball of light tends to get diminished once children pass that period and these people are going for that like they, they want that energy like if you study gnostic the gnostic sources as well as many different kinds of uh, uh, spiritual content that have written more on the occult uh, phenomena they really talk about how there's this non human force as described in the in the same way across cultures that like you can pick it up 
in the Christian tradition with the demons, the Gnostics call these people the Archons. If you research the African continent, they have their own word for it. They call these entities the Chitauri or the serpent beings. If you research like uh, Central American sources, you will see that consistently across cultures, which have been disconnected, which couldn't communicate at the time. And you research their ancient texts. They have described these entities in the same way. In fact, the Gnostic texts are one of the best evidence because uh, they were found in a sealed jar that was buried around 1000 AD. Okay, and uh, they found these in 1945 in Nag Hammadi in Egypt. And when they actually, uh, when people actually translated them and put that whole thing together, uh, these Gnostics were describing reptilian and grey entities, which are the primary, uh, you can say, holographic form in this reality that this malevolent level of consciousness takes. That's, that's really behind this whole agenda of enslaving human consciousness. You know, that's that's kind of the text in which they describe these reptilian and grey entities thousand years back. And if you if you see the research now. Now you can find a wide variety of sources that had like didn't know anything about the Gnostic texts that are talking about the same phenomenon today, like uh, people who've been, uh, you can say, part of secret space programs or black budget, uh, you know, covert operations, classified projects. Okay, all this stuff exists, especially within the US government, like many programs are funded without Congress or anyone knowing about them, like they're sanctioned directly from the deep state military and stuff. Okay, so you can triangulate these things, you can look at the ancient world, you can look at modern phenomena and everything kind of comes together, but you have to really go into that and do your research yourself, right? So that's what I was saying that these texts really describe the, the archons as well, like this, this kind of force, this malevolent force that really uh, is, is behind this whole thing. And that's created like a virtual reality simulation for us that we're currently experiencing. And these texts also talk about how these these beings actually keep us humans in low vibrational states like of fear, anxiety, depression, anger. And see, this is not me saying that all these states are bad. There's a point at which you know, everything that comes up needs to be processed. Like if I'm feeling angry after reading about my loss of freedom or my liberty or, uh, you know, satanic ritual abuse or whatever, this whole new age idea that we're not supposed to feel these emotions because they're negative and we're supposed to stay, but as ab like, that's absolute mind control. You know, the Satanists put this stuff out there through the new age movement to actually brainwash people into not looking into this stuff. Right. But uh, these are again, like pitfalls, like this whole avoidance of negative emotions, every emotion has a reason. And we need to like process that and actually integrate that when we feel that. But uh, the Archons actually have created a society through their puppet bloodline families that have, have controlled this whole system, wherein they've structured society in such a way where they've controlled the sources of education as well as they have infiltrated almost every single area of life. And they've made it in such a way that humanity by default, especially through the banking system and how much it impoverishes people and uh, you know really saps money from them and harvests people's energy. It's like people have to keep working their whole life, have to keep working endless hours just to make ends meet. And this system is not by accident, okay? Whatever we're seeing in the physical world, everything I've described with respect to the banking system manipulation, how the political system is set up about government and like how all these laws are passed. All of that is really a, a masterminded plan by dark occult forces who really understand this, this, this knowledge that I'm talking about. And they are doing it in, I mean, full intention of really achieving that purpose that in a mass default state, there is war, there is suffering, there's chaos. People are constantly stuck in issues and these emotions. And this is exactly what these, you know, uh, we can say malevolent uh, states of consciousness feed on. And they've structured society in such a way for that. So the reason I said that is because in the rituals itself, they're after this, you know, energy of, of children, really, by putting them through that torture and terror and stuff. So that's, that's one of the reasons why these people do it.